All right, guys, let's talk about another transformation here, the uh, the rotation, and kind of see if we can get some patterns going on with the coordinates and uh, what seems to be happening here. So um, let's take a look at an example here. We have a, uh, a rotation. So that is a transformation that describes the motion of a figure about a fixed point. Okay, so generally we're going to do rotations um, about the origin. Okay, so the origin, of course, is where the x and y axis meet. So we're going to kind of use that as our point of rotation. And uh, what we're going to do is talk about rotating um, 90 degrees, um, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees. Okay, because otherwise, if you if you're kind of in between those, it's much more difficult to uh, determine where the point is going to end up. So let's just kind of stick with those. So let's say what we have an example one here, the point three one. Okay, so we have this point right here. That's going to be like our main initial point of emphasis here. Um, we can see it was rotated. Okay, so you see the, the 90 degree angle, if it kind of rotated 90 degrees that way, we're going to go counterclockwise, okay, which is going to be like up and to the left like we, sh we showed there. Um, and we see the 90 degree angle right here, okay. What, where did that point end up? Where is point A? So the coordinates at point A um, are at negative 1, 3. Okay, and that was for a 90 degree um, rotation. Okay, so if we kind of clear that out and think about, all right, oops, I don't want to clear that out. What if I clear out this drawing here? Okay, if we took our point, our original point, 3, 1, okay, and we rotated it 180 degrees, so kind of straight through, we ended up where point B is. Okay, the coordinates there are negative 3, negative 1. And that was, again, a 180 degree um, rotation because we again we kind of rotated a full a straight line is uh, which is 180 degrees and then finally point C down here if we see where point C is that over here is if we rotated 90 180 and then, a, and then another 90 so so a total of 270 degrees and the coordinates of point C um, the X coordinate is 1 and the Y coordinate is negative 3 Again, that was for a 270 degree rotation about the origin. Okay, so if you take a look, remember the original point, 3, 1, and if you look at all the coordinates here of the, of the rotations, they kind of have those same numbers in there, 3s and 1s. It's just sometimes the X and Ys are not in the same spot or we, we introduce negatives. Um, but we're not getting any other values other than the 3 and 1. So what I want to come up with is a way, can we figure out how, how does the original coordinates help us determine where the image will end up after the, each of these uh, rotations? All right, so let's see if we can get some rules here. Let's jump down to the bottom here. I'm going to make a conjecture about the uh, changes of the X and Y coordinates um, when we do each of these rotations. So let's again remember our original point. We were, what we were kind of starting out with was the point 3, 1 that was given to us, okay? And it went to, for a 90 degree rotation, um, point A, if we see in the table above, was negative 1, 3, okay? And this was for 90 degree rotation, right? 90 degree rotation. So what does it look like the rule would be, okay? So if we take a look, 3, 1 is like the original X and Y value, right? That's the, that's the original point. The new point... Okay, where it ended up, the x coordinate is actually the opposite of what the y coordinate was. Okay, see how it's negative one? It's the opposite of the original y coordinate. And then the new y coordinate is the original x coordinate. So a rule could be for a 90 degree rotation, the original point x, y, remember the symbolic notation, what it ends up turning into is the, the new x coordinate is the opposite of the original y coordinate, and the new y coordinate is the original x coordinate. And we always write it in that order, like the x coordinate comes first. So that's why I wrote negative y there. And then the second coordinate is what the original x was. Okay, let's think about for 180. For 180 degree rotation, this was um, up here at point B. Okay, again, the original x, y was 3, 1. It went to, if we look at the coordinates of point B, it went to negative 3, negative 1. Okay, so what would the rule be? Okay, so for 180 degree rotation, and this is again counterclockwise, um, any point x, y, if we take a look, let's compare what happened. 
It was originally three. The new x is negative three. So it looks like it's the opposite of what the x was. And if the original y was one, the new one was negative one. So it's gonna be the opposite of what the original y was. Okay, and let's do one more. Let's do the 270. Okay, for a 270 degree rotation, what happened to the original point? Three, one, when we rotated it 270 degrees down here at point C, it ended up at one, negative three. Okay, so for a 270 degree rotation, let's see if we can generalize. What's the rule for any x, y? What happened? Okay, if we take a look, the, the new x value is what the original y value was. Okay, so the x value was the original y value. And the new y value is the opposite of what the original x was. So it's negative x. Okay, so let's keep these rules down, keep them handy so that we can uh, apply them and they'll help us um, when we're doing these problems. And instead of having to memorize um, a bunch of things, just kind of use it, have a, have a little list next to you. Um, it's going to make this whole section a lot easier, okay, to have those in front of you. One last question though on the bottom here. What about the point 31 after a 360 degree rotation? Okay, so let's take a look back at our, our figure that they drew for us up here. We talked about, um, you know, 90 degrees. The original point we started there, right? 90 degrees got us there. 180 got us there. 270 got us there. If we did another 90 and got back, did a full 360, we're just going to end up right back where we were. So if we wanted to think of a rule for a 360 degree rotation, just to complete our list here, a 360 degree rotation um, is just going to get you right back to where it started. So any xy, if you rotate it 360 degrees, is just going to end up back at that same xy. Okay, so if you want to add that to the list again, these are the, these are the rules for rotations. Okay, they're going to be very helpful and handy to have. Um, in your notes so that you can uh, use them and, uh, and kind of do these rotations a little bit easier. Okay, let's look at a couple more examples. All right, here we go. Figure two. This is a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation um, about the origin of figure one. So again, just to kind of visualize what's going on, let's say, for example, point C originally is there. Okay, it ends up over there because a 90 degree rotation about the origin means we're going to form a 90 degree angle, okay, just like that. This angle right here would be 90 degrees, and that would rotate point C to, uh, to over where C prime is, okay? Same thing would happen with point B and point A, and they would end up, and you see, as you see, where figure 2 is um, with the A prime, B prime, C prime. So let's get some coordinates down, and let's see what's going on here. Okay, so let's fill out the table. First off, the pre-image, just the original figure, the uh, black triangle there, the coordinates um, of point A. It looks like that point A over here is at um, 6, 2. Okay, point B up here is over at 3, 4. And then point C, which we're using in our example, is at 1, 2. Okay, now let's see what happened to the coordinates in the actual image. After it's been rotated, A prime, right? A prime up here is at negative 2, 6. Okay, B prime over here is at negative 4, 3. And then C prime down here is at negative 2, 1. Okay. Let's verify that that followed the rule. Remember, we wrote those rules before. We said the rule for a 90-degree rotation was that any given x, y would trans transform into negative y, x. That was the rule we wrote. So what that's telling me is that, for example, the coordinates here, okay, if it's 6, 2, let's just write the example here, 6, 2, for example, if that's the x, y, the new coordinates need to be the opposite of the y coordinate first. So the opposite of 2 is negative 2. And then the original x coordinate, which is the 6. 
okay? And as you see, that is what we do have right here. So this kind of just verifies that the rule works, okay? That's how it works. You take the opposite of the Y coordinate first, and then you keep the X coordinate alone. And you could verify that worked for points B and C as well, okay? But let's take a look at one other way of thinking about this visually, okay? Um, at the bottom here, when a figure in quadrant one of the coordinate plane is rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin, its image is located in quadrant blank. So we need to know what these were, these quadrants, what are they talking about, right? So when you have a, a graph, okay, our coordinate plane, x and y axis here, right, divides it into four regions or quadrants. And just so we're clear on the ordering, the top right where all the numbers are positive is quadrant one, okay? Then it goes counterclockwise. Quadrant two is over there. Quadrant three is this one down here, and quadrant four is down there. Okay, so if we think about rotating a figure, right, if we rotated something in quadrant one 90 degrees, it's going to end up in quadrant two. Okay, so every 90 degrees is basically like a quadrant. So if we rotated, for example, 180 degrees and started in quadrant one, it would end up in quadrant three. So that's just a way to kind of help visualize where things are going to be. So let's look at another example. Let's take a look at number four here. Consider the triangle. So they're giving us a triangle DEF. So that's the pre-image. Um, they wanted to trace it and use tracing paper. We're just going to use the uh, rule um, to see if we can get the image after we rotate this thing 90 degrees counterclockwise. Okay. So we have the coordinates. Okay. They give us the coordinates in the table here. And we can see points D, E, and F, okay? And if we follow the rule again for a 90 degree rotation, here's the big rule, the 90 degree rotation, any point X, Y is going to transform into negative Y, X, okay? So let's follow that rule for the points we have here, okay? Let me move that down a little bit. Oops, I guess I can't do that. All right, so, Point D was at 1, 1, right? Point D is at 1, 1. So this is the X and Y. Its image, if we were to rotate it, here's the rule up here. The, the X coordinate will be the opposite of the Y coordinate. So the opposite of the Y coordinate, so that means this needs to be negative 1. And then the new Y coordinate will be the original X coordinate, which was 1. Okay, so negative 1, 1, that's going to be D prime. Okay, E prime, same thing. The coordinates are going to be the opposite of its Y coordinate first, so negative 5. And then its actual X coordinate is 1, so negative 5, 1 is over here. Okay, and then finally F prime. We're going to follow the same rule, right? opposite of its y coordinate, so negative 1, and then its actual x coordinate, so negative 1, 3. Okay, so that's f prime. Let's just label these here. The green one was e prime, and the blue one was d prime, and we get our triangle like that, and that is a rotation of 90 degrees. So all I did there, again, I followed this rule, okay? And it can be a little tricky because you're thinking, you know, x, y. So this is just saying the new x is the opposite of the original y, okay? The new y will always be the original x. The, this is the original coordinates here, original x and y, okay? Of the pre-image, okay? So we kind of got that um, worked out. Okay, so let's just summarize one more time. Let me get you the uh, the rules. Make sure you have these handy for you. Um, the rules for rotation counterclockwise. Let me go counterclockwise, a little abbreviation there. Um, if it's 90 degrees, the original point x, y, this is the one we just did, becomes negative y, x. If it's 180 degrees, the original xy becomes negative x, 
negative y. If it's 270 degrees, the original xy will become y negative x. Okay, and these all came from the very first example we saw. And just for the sake of completion, um, if you do a full 360, right, xy, it's just going to end up back at the same place. It's going to stay at xy. And if you just do um, follow that rule for each of the vertices, you can then plot the points, plot the vertices, and then you should be able to draw the figure in. Okay, so those are the rotation rules. Um, and again, instead of memorizing them, why don't you just have those near you? Um, what you can do, like let's say if you if you really had to memorize these, um, this is the one that you really need to memorize. And then the other ones can actually come from that first one. Okay, because um, basically, I guess I can give one little side example. Let's just say we had the point uh, four, six or something, right? Okay, let's say you only knew this top rule. Okay, a 90 degree rotation would take that xy and it would turn it into, so negative y would make this negative 6 because that's the y, and then 4. Okay, to get to 180, if you didn't know the other rules, you could just apply the 90 degree rule again. Okay, like doing 90 twice is the same as, as 180. So what I mean by that is use, use these now and do the same process. So the, the 180 would take this and make it opposite and keep this the same. Okay, so the, the original point was xy, 4, 6. We see after 180, it became the opposite of the original and the opposite of the original y as well. So it's just kind of a way to apply the 90 degree rule twice. And again, you don't have to do that if you didn't have these all the rules in front of you if, if all you memorized was the first one you could use that to get the 180 and the 270 by just applying it again and again um, so it's just kind of like a backup plan for you okay so that's the rotations counterclockwise um, about the origin